Hello everyone, for this video I'm going to go into how to geocode data in Excel. We're going to be using a VBA code that pulls on a Google API that will allow us to get coordinates for the latitude and longitude for an address. With that, we're going to walk through the steps, but primarily we're going to use Little Rock data and go forward, similar to other exercises before. So with that, I went ahead and downloaded shoplifting data for 2020 for the city of Little Rock. I filtered based on that. I also downloaded the business license data for the city. This allowed me to separate and filter based on classification. So the data came from the online portal hub. With that, you can see here the department story that I pulled out based on the classification. So we have major chain and some discount variety ones. And we have the address that we'll be using to geocode. A key part that you see here that it is already concatenated into one field. You might notice that it needs a space in between Street and Little Rock and some of those where it could create an issue. I'm going to show you another way to do it to where you don't have to rely on just that. Now if we go over to shoplifting, similar to other kind of crime data sets, we have time and event stamps. We also have location and even the latitude and longitude. Now, given that the crime data already has the latitude and longitude, you might wonder, well, why would I want to recreate it if it's already provided? Keep in mind, these two data sets are coming from different sources. The crime data is coming from the police department, while the department store and the business license data is coming from the treasury department within the city itself. Because of that, and also I'm familiar with Little Rock, how and when it's geocoded differs. And if it's pulling on different source data, you can get very similar latitude and longitude, but it's not going to be exactly the same, and that can create issues and headaches down the line, and that's what we're trying to prevent. We're trying to do and take care of it early on so we don't have issues on the back end when we're trying to do other types of analysis with it. Now going forward, you can see up top here on your tabs, I have developer. This is what we're going to need for this. If you do not have developer, if you go to file, to your options, and you go down to your customize your ribbon, ribbon's the top part. Just check the box next to developer, hit OK, and you're good to go. With that, we're going to be creating and working within Visual Basic. Here, I already have a module that is blank for us. If you don't have one, you can go to Insert and go to Module, and then you'll be good to go here. With that, all you need to do now is copy and paste the code. The good part is someone's already done the code for us, created it, and made it publicly available. It makes our life a lot easier. With that, I'll go ahead and open that website. So here, if you Google my engineering world and kind of look at the geocoding using VBA, it was just recently updated in 2020. With that, you can look through the site. It does give you good directions and what's going on in the background. Primarily, what we're interested in at this point is just copying the code. So we're truly just going to copy it. What it's going to do is take our address information, ping Google's API for geocoding, and give us back the coordinates that Latin long for specific addresses. So with that, I have this open. I'm just going to paste it, control V. And here it also provides you notes on what's going on, the purpose of this. The key part you need to pay attention to is the API key here. That's what you need to create through Google. Before we get into that part, make sure you save now, since you've created a macro within this, your Excel workbook should be macro enabled. Right now it's just a workbook. So you'll need to resave it as a macro enabled. So just open that up, go down, and you're good to go. I've already saved it that way, so I know it's okay. All right, now where to go from here? So we already know we have some address level data, but now we want to get the coordinates for those. With that, I'm going to go back into here. They also have the same uh, gentleman made this step-by-step -step instructions, a bit dated given the changes even on the Google side, but it does walk you through the steps of how to get an API key. A part that I highly recommend doing is setting up your Google account ahead of times, even your billing information, because for the API key to work properly, you need to have the billing information included, even if you're going to use the free side of it, if and just happenly go over the 40000 per month, they're going to bill you for that. And you can track that on the dashboard itself, and I'll show you what that looks like. But anything over 40000 a month ends up being a half a cent per request, and you can track where you're at with that at any given point. You can even shut down projects. I've done that many times today. So with it, if you just go to Google, and I just put in Google Geocode API key, I'm going to click on the first one up here. 
as you can see here, it, it brings us to a main kind of uh, maps platform and documentation page. You can see I'm already logged into account, so I don't need to sign in. So a big part here is I want to go to the project selector page, and then I want to go to pre the credentials page. This is where it will give you the information that you need. You can restrict your API, why that's important. You can read further on down here with it. But with it, let's start off by just going to the project selector page. I have some prior projects in here. With that, I want to create a new project. So here, create a new project. Let's just do uh, geocode Excel video. So with that, you can attach an organization to it for right now. I'm not going to do anything with it. I can leave it as is. And I can hit create. This might take a few minutes to fully load. I'm going to hit pause and just let that run in the background. Once it fully loads, you'll get a page like this where it shows up your notification, what all it's made. You can see a general overview. So this is pretty much your dashboard with your project information that you should monitor if you're going to use this actively, and especially if you're going to geocode a lot. This will allow you to track how many requests you've made, what you're looking like, if it's going to be cost associated, and where you're going from there. So with that, we already have the dashboard open. I'm going to hit the navigation toolbar. And here it gives you some different options of APIs and services. We're interested in the credentials first. And give this a second to open. As you can see here, I don't have any API, API keys at this point. So we need to create that and get that going for us. So create credentials, API key. So we have that. So you can restrict it if you want and change the stipulations around it. For right now, for what I'm using, this is just an example video. So I'm going to shut down this project after this video post. I'm OK with what this looks like. The key part now is although we have a API key, we need to make sure that we have the geocoding part to it. So if we go to library, I'm going to type in geocoding here. Oops, coding. And it pulls it up for us. And even here, if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see how much it costs if you were to go over the free amount. So 200 bucks per month. If you go over that, this is where it starts to charge based on that. You can break it down as 5,000 per 1,000 quest, and it goes down if you do more than that per month. But if you're staying under that element of, I think it ends up being about 40,000, uh, you'll be okay and you're good to go there with it. With it, just make sure you hit enable because you want to have this part of your API key. And there we go. And this is where you'll be able to track with the API how many requests you're doing based on the credential itself, the requests, and you can follow this over time. So this is where you know how many you have being run at any given point. So with that, I went back into credentials, and now that it's enabled for the geocoding API, you want to copy your key, and if you come back into the VBA, you want to paste your key where it says the API key. There we go, and we have mine there. I'm going to hit save, minimize that, and I can open up my spreadsheet now. Now you might remember, I have a couple issues with the address here. So to clean this up, and this is just general upkeep with full address, we can do equals concatenate. And here we know we want the street address. After that, we're going to want the city and state and zip. So that is gonna be followed by a comma, then a space, and then we're gonna go city. comma, state, zip. And you see here, I added a couple commas and just spaced it out a bit more. If you just autofill down, now we have our full address. Remember, since this is a formula itself, it's pulling on this. If you just copy and paste these, as then values, it takes away the concatenation and leaves you with your file itself. All right, well, now that we've had that run, if you look through the notes of the Visual Basic of what you put in, pretty simple and straightforward commands that we're gonna pull from. 
So here, we're just going to put at the top, these are going to be our coordinates. So here, it's equal, it's going to be get coordinates. And again, I'm just going to select the cell next to it. This is what I want to get coordinates for. It's going to ping the Google API, the maps itself, and it's going to pull back the latitude and longitude for us. Hit enter, and here you see we have the latitude and longitude for that. So to keep this going forward, and if you want to go down the list, you can double click or just drag and click, and it will do that for you. Give it a second, it's pulling for each one of them. It might take a second. There we go. You can see here it generated across each one and each one's unique based on the address that it's pulling from. So we're in a good position here. The same now can be done for the shoplifting part. And instead of doing coordinates, I'll do latitude and longitude. So you can see that even though it's a different command, it's pulling the same ones. It's a different function, but you get the same results. This will also show how there's slight differences between the geocoding processes. Again, let's create a full address here. So we're gonna use the concat again. I'm gonna start with the incident address, put a comma after that. And then we're gonna do a space after that, followed by the city, followed by a comma, followed by a space then the state, space, and then the zip code. Close that off. And now we have our full address. And there, I just flash filled all down. Again, similar to what we had to do before, I'm going to copy all of these and then just paste the values so it gets rid of the actual function. And we're left with just the values again. So here, I'm just gonna put latitude, and here longitude, and the same function. So here, it's gonna be get, instead of coordinates, we wanna get the latitude. So we're just specifying, it's gonna pull on this specific address, close it off, and we're good to go. Autofill all the way down, give it a few seconds, it's gonna take since it's painting back and forth a while. As you saw on the prior one, when I was doing the department stores, Excel did hesitate a bit, almost froze, so just give it some time and see how long it takes for you to do. Another easy way to see, down at the bottom, it's taking some time. So I'm gonna just hit pause and let it go through it. All right, that honestly took probably about three to four minutes, given if we scroll down, there's just over, I think, 1,200, 1,247. So it took a bit of time. Here again, if you wanna look at the decimal places, you can mess with that to where you can make it shorter or larger depending on what you want to do. And even here, you can see that there are slight differences when you compare the latitude from the data that we already got from the data hub, we see slight differences. So with that, similar to how we did for the latitude, we can go ahead and do longitude. So get longitude, I'm gonna select that address, close it off, and here we go, and we have our longitude now. Again, I'm going to flash fill and let the macro run. And I'll come back once it's done. All right, and as you can see here, again, it took three to four minutes, nothing too long. Uh, but with that, you can change the decimal places again so they just match. And there we go. You can see, even if you're comparing, that there are slight differences with that. But now you can see how to add in latitude and longitude for specific addresses, be it crime related, business data, or other types of address level information that you have at your hands or in your hands. With that, this is an easy way to go ahead and do it. My interest in this is then to now compare department stores and crime when it comes to shoplifting. In respect to an 80-20 rule, Excel also has a Pareto principle type uh, table. I will be going through that and how to look at that within that framework. So that's why I did this first step. And here I hopped back into the dashboard for this project and you can see the requests that hit up when I was just doing that. So you can see the uptick and this is where you can track how many you have done, the requests you've done over time and monitor. If you are think you're approaching or approaching uh, costs associated with it, you can track it here and you can always shut down a project. With that, if there's any questions about what was done in this video, if you need more details, please reach out, let me know. The next one I'm going to do, like I said, is gonna get into the 80-20 rule when it comes to crime and crime in place literature. If not, Take care and see you next time.